Susan Sarandon dropped by her talent agency, UTA, after being vocal about the ongoing genocide happening in Palestine at a pro-Palestine rally. Now, this is going to make it awkward for the people over at the Young Turks because Anna Kasparian, a uh, fake sexual harass accuser, yeah. and Cenk Uger, fake presidential candidate, uh, both are represented by UTA. Uh, well, and they're both very passionate about the Israeli-Palestine issue. Oh. And now they're dropping people like her over this, I guess they just don't watch uh, YouTube over at UTA, so they have no idea what their clients, <laughs> Anna Kasparian well, and Jake. He's designated Kuka. that guy, right? Isn't isn't like? Are, are, so, I would say they're the ones allowed to do that uh -oh. under the. You know what I mean? Like it's their it's their lane. Oh really? I, well, if I had to bet, because it wouldn't make sense, you'd fire Susan Sarandon and not you know that yet you wouldn't. Well, but it makes it even more awkward for them to stay there now. Don't you think that Cenk Uger and Anna Kasparian would just leave UTA because they're firing people for being having the same opinion they're having? Well, no, I wouldn't, but I understand the principle you're speaking and then, of. And this idea, no, I no they're not going to do <laughs> yeah. My point is they're not going right. to do that. No. <laughs> it's not uh, a union guy. No, Jack's not a union guy. <laughs> so they say that the UTA dropped them. I think this is what what happened is Susan Sarandon dropped UTA. And you know how she did it? By being on the right side of history. That's all it took. And you want to hear how she did it? Here it is. Stand here in my cruelly given white privilege to say that you don't have to be Palestinian to stand with the Palestinian people. You do not have to be Palestinian to understand that the slaughter of almost 5,000 children is unacceptable and a war crime. You do not have to be Palestinian to understand that war crimes are being delivered every single day according to the UN and other humanitarian groups. This is a time for education. Because, as a previous uh, speaker mentioned, so many people do not understand the context in which this October 7th assault happened. They don't understand the history of what has been happening to the Palestinian people for 75 years. So this is an opportunity to educate people if they can have an open mind, if you can get beyond the tribal instincts that have separated us now for so long. It's time to have an open heart. It's time to be strong. And it's time that Palestine be free. So, what I think is happening here is they're forgetting who needs who at this level. Susan Sarandon doesn't need UTA. <laughs> okay? She's Susan frickin' Sarandon. America loves her. They don't love UTA. Do you remember a while back I was going to maybe go with UTA? And my uh, manager at the time, she goes, yeah, and I was already working a job. And I was going to maybe have to pay off the job I was working before I went with them. I go, no, yeah, I probably killed the entire chance of it, which is good. Like, uh -huh. are you kidding me that that would even be on the table? She's going to be okay without UTA. You know why? Because she didn't stand for genocide, whereas UTA is. That's not sustainable, I don't think, as a business model to be standing for genocide, even in Hollywood. I, I and by the way, when, and when, <laughs> what? I bet it seems pretty sustainable. Maybe it is. <laughs> Maybe you're right about that. <laughs> Glenn Greenwald says, every person fired over the last seven weeks for political views or banned, put on no higher blacklists or had their groups banned, have been Palestinian defenders and Israel critics. It hasn't happened to any pro-Israel advocates, even one saying genocidal things like erase Gaza. Well, we just saw that guy Sipowitz or whatever his name Seldowitz. is. Seldowitz. Um That's the first one. because And it took a video like that. Yeah. I, I mean, it was pretty br it was shockingly brazen. Like, he does this all the time. That's like his ha hobby. His hobby is doing that. And then 
which she said, by the way, none of that. She didn't, and by the way, some, some, yeah. don't you think UTA is going to end up in court over this if she wanted to? You know, I don't have any idea. If she wanted to, she could. I'm sure there would be lawyers willing to work pro bono to sue UTA over this, and she would win. Because I don't know who her specific agent is. If it's like, I'm not going to work with her, and the company said, right. yeah, go ahead, don't work with her. Uh, Frank Conniff, former writer for this show, former uh, panelist on this show. Now, uh, What did he criticize her for? So, no, he didn't. Oh, he said, I've criticized the He says, I, oh, he criticized her because she compared, he's a Hillary fan. Frank is? Yes. I had him on uh, my old he, podcast. He loves I Hillary, agree. and he criticized her for comparing Hillary and Trump and all that stuff, right? He's smart. It's weird he has never looked into her. He says, I've criticized, you mean Hillary? Yeah. He says, I've criticized the shit out of Sarandon for several years now, but this is not cool. And mm. I say, tip of the hat. Yeah, to Frank Conniff. For Frank Conniff. For having the political views that he does that completely diverge from this show, but having a principle. Yeah. That's him st having principles. Yeah. And I say, good on Frank's. I mean, I think his, I, I don't think, I don't say this as an, as an insult, more of a joke. <laughs> okay. That Frank is the Buddha who sits in the absolute center of centrism. And when he's calling you on your bullshit, <laughs> you better take that call. He's uh, uh, the Tao of centrism <laughs> over here. Is, uh... <laughs> wow. Good for you, Frank. So, um, Who's going to make me laugh? I'm, I have it? a feeling that UTA is going to blame all this all on an intern and fire them immediately. Yeah, well, once Chank and Anna call up with their, and say, hey, what's going on down there at the old UTA? <laughs> so I, ch I challenge the, whatever is left of the Young Turks audience which I, I think are just random people on YouTube at this point they, who happen to click on a headline. They took their own moniker off their video, so you can't tell on their thumbnails. You don't even know it's a Young Why? Turks clip because people don't like the Young Turks, and oh. they wouldn't click on it if they knew it was a Young Turk video. So now they try to trick people into thinking it's not a Young Turk video. Uh, well, I put my name on my videos. Well, now, in fairness, if you watch uh, uh, Chenk talk about legalizing bestiality without the logo, it is better. <laughs> so uh I, I whoever is left uh, as a viewer of the young turks i hope you bring this up to them that they're agents of anna kasparian fake sex harass accuser and jank uger uh horse horse sexer and and fake no, and fake presidential just, uh, candidate he wants take on it that's all um he jokes. He's he's pro bestiality. Let's just say it. He well, is. If you're giving pleasure, you got to hear what he, he says. If you're giving pleasure, what's what? He's what? A, he's not for. <laughs> he's he's against. He's against banging a horse in the ass. But yes. he's for anything else. Right. Yeah. Correct. Uh, he would legalize it. But anyway, what's the harm? What's the harm? So, um, and that's if what, you still, I mean, if you still watch the Young Turks, I would hope that you would tell them in their super chat or. Or you would maybe write an, uh, a friendly, polite email asking what's their stance on this. <laughs> Do you think when the founding fathers decided that a non-citizen can't run for president, one of them was like, come on, you know what's going to happen. They're going to try to make it legal to have sex with horses. <laughs> <laughs> if you let people who aren't bo natural born citizens, they're going to want to say it's okay to have sex with like, animals. Nah, man, come on, that's racist. Like, no, trust me. Trust me. <laughs> have you seen some of these guys born in Turkey? They You've can't, never been a turkey. They can't wait to jerk off a horse. Oh my god! Or worse, <laughs> they they tried to do a sex arresting on me. What a fail that was. It was! She gave you a chance to stop pointing out their hypocrisy. Yeah. You know, this is going to end now, <laughs> or I'm going to take this thing that's not a boy. Thing. Did it end? Didn't end? Did it end? Uh, did hey, not trust end? Me, Kyle Kalinske is going to go along with it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, so tip of the hat to Susan Sarandon. Uh, we're on the same side mostly politically, Susan and I, although I think I'm a little too caustic for her to come on this show. Uh, and now the UTA dropped her. Maybe. Now the UTA dropped her. Yeah. I wouldn't have dropped you. Yeah. Jimmy, do you remember the quote that she said about you? She said, she was on the Young Turks once, mm. and she said... Uh, 
Hey, I've been uh, I've been watching that Jimmy Dores show, and I like it. He's a little bit of a loose cannon, but that's why I like him, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. That's, that's a dir- what I would like. That's why I like. That's the a show. direct quote. He's a little bit of a loose cannon, but that's why I like him. I don't want to see controlled cannons. Right, me neither. <laughs> I really don't. I'm really sick of that. I'm really sick of the worrying about UTA that's feeling right. that it is across all mainstream so entertainment. So when when I said I wouldn't vote for Hillary Clinton and I kept telling people why and I kept telling people the truth about Hillary Clinton, that's when Hollywood kind of turned on me. I remember I got a a message from the executive producer of Modern Family, a show which I love. Really? Uh yeah, she tweeted at me like that I, I'm you know horrible things. That I'm the worst thing. Mm. And uh so they so believe me, people were already hating me at the tippy top of show business a long time ago. And then when I endorsed uh, Tulsi Gabbard, because Tulsi Gabbard uh, was telling the truth about our foreign wars, uh, now she's gone off the rails with Israel-Palestine. But back then, that's why people hated her, because the establishment told you to hate her, because she was telling the truth about Syria. Yeah, right. And when I endorsed her, that was it, CAA. So every, so it was all over for me in, in regular Hollywood, and I didn't need them. I don't need regular Hollywood. It's crazy that would even fact. I don't have to write a letter level. of apology for knowing someone. I don't yeah. need anybody, and and I I've made it on my own, on my own wits, my whole life. I've made it on my own wits. I, it's just like the very idea that you would have to watch because your agent might be mad at you. Like I just like. I don't even like have any anger at people or whatever. I just think like, dude, that's pathetic. I feel bad for somebody like that. You're, you're a loser, dude. You're a loser. If you're like, oh, they want to sit. If you, honest to God, how does anybody live that way anymore? I mean, you couldn't pay me enough money for that. They, they all, still, could, they all still live that way. You could pay me enough money, but they all still live that way. You know what? I, it's not even holding against you living that way, but then to be indignant at anyone else when you're a punk like that, that's what, what rubs me. I was uh, I was talking to this musician, very nice guy and a great musician, and he had just come back from a gig playing for some really rich people, mm-hmm. like as r- more rich than you could imagine. Like, like he Bill, had a blindfold on and Bill, it was eyes wide shut time. Bill Gates level rich, <laughs> yeah. right? Eyes wide shut party. And he was talking about how obnoxious they were to him, right? As he's playing, mm-hmm. and he goes, "There's not enough money in the world to do that gig." I go, "Apparently there is." Yeah, we did the <laughs> gig. You, you, you did, did it. You're telling me about the gig. <laughs> you're telling me about it. You, you, you're going to cash that check, right? You mean again? Were you meant to say yeah, again? I think you meant again. But anyway, um, there is no harder money to make than when you do a job just for money. When when I um, when I wrote that book, uh, your country's just not that into you. Mm-hmm. The reason why I wrote that book wasn't because I had a burning desire to write a book. Mm-hmm. I had a bur- I, my my manager told me, "Hey, if you write a book, it'll get you meetings for developing a TV show for you." It will? Yes. He goes, you don't even have to finish it. Just if they think that you got a deal, he goes, it'll open doors. And it did. Oh. And my, my manager, he knew a lot of things. He's good. He was good. I always never wrote a spec script. I mean, I never got jobs from spec scripts. I've done submissions and stuff, but never wrote like a spec script. And and I always was like, yeah, you got to pack it. I'm like, I don't believe these people read. Just tell, ah, them, I got a, just tell I mean, them you have it. Yeah, just tell them I got awards. Like, so I have a story yeah. about that, but. So when I so they gave me a big advance. My my manager again, great manager, Alex Murray, mm. was great. He really could get it done. And and I, what I liked about him is he believed in me. That, mm-hmm. That's the, that's the nicest thing. And uh, he was right. Turns out, <laughs> and um, he uh, he got me a book deal. And that was at a time when people weren't getting paid for book deals. He got me like twenty grand up really? front. Really? Up front. And so then I had to write the book. And so they gave me a deadline. Like, okay, in eight months, you're going to deliver the book. And so uh, seven months went by, and I hadn't written a thing. Oh. And I was like, I got to get on this. And so <laughs> I every day I would get up, and for like eight to ten hours a day, I would just write and try to put the book together. And I broke out in hives on my back so bad mm. uh, that they started bleeding. Oh my god! Yeah, I took off my T-shirt and it was all blood all over. I'm like, holy shit! So I had to wow. go to I had to go to a dermatologist. And this is when I went to the dermatologist. Uh, I take off my shirt and literally the dermatologist does this. Oh, like that! I go what? 
Somebody's like, writing gonna, a book. Somebody's we, got a deadline. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was just doing that. I wasn't doing it for the love of writing a book. Now, if I write a book, now, by the way, I'm still proud of that book. The book came together. It was good. A lot of good parts in that book. It came out a lot faster than Jenk's book. Uh, it came out a lot faster than Jenk's book. He swelled book. up to three times his normal size. He was so stressed. <laughs> <laughs> But that was so hard on me, not only mentally, but physically, just to write that book. It comes out of you, out of your, your body and mind are not disconnected from each other. Right. And the stress was so hard. My, I had to get, and, and the guy goes, I'm going to give you a shot. And I go, I'm not taking any more shots. Because I had gotten a flu shot and it, my arm still doesn't feel good. Was he give you a cortisone or something? And he was going to go, I got to give you a shot. I go, no, give me pills. And so he did. He gave me pills. Took longer for me to clear it up, but it did work. Maybe a salve of some kind. Uh, it was horrible. <laughs> hey, come see us doing a live stand-up show. We'll be in Burbank, California, Oxnard, California, Venice, California, Palmdale, California. Then we're going to Omaha, Des Moines, Milwaukee, Lansing, Bend, Oregon, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, and Boston, Massachusetts. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all those tickets. Mm -hmm.